Hi there, Tara here with Plus Plus Love. And I realize that your t-shirts and the garments that you want to use in your memory quilt, they might be the only thing that you have that you want to use in that quilt. And so when you cut into those garments, you really got one shot. And before you do that, I would encourage that you take some time, do a couple practice projects. In the end, a memory quilt is best made for yourself. And I, ju I genuinely believe that. I do this professionally, and I think that the ones that you make for yourself are the ones that you're always gonna love the most. So what my customer has asked me to do is use some vintage fabric. And these are actually Precious Moments prints. They are out of print now. You can't really find these anymore unless you go to a fabric reseller or a fabric, maybe a quilt shop that just has these or somebody that has in the stash that they're willing to de-stash or sell it to you. So what I'm gonna do is make a whole cloth quilt using Precious Moments on the top and then a Precious Moments print ABC on the back and a whole cloth quilt is uh, an awesome first project for any new quilter because it doesn't require any piecing at all any sewing pieces together you're going to jump straight into the sandwiching of the quilt which i'm going to show you today so how you layer your quilt top your batting and your backing and then you are going to start quilting anyway so i am essentially emulating or recreating a quilt that was previously made that can't ever be remade. So we're gonna use these fabrics. I'm gonna take you through step-by-step step the process. There is no pattern for this quilt because a whole cloth quilt, you don't do any piecing together. You're just gonna you know, put the amount of fabric together, length and width that you want your finished quilt to be, layer it and start quilting. So let's get started. Because this fabric is out of print, it adds just a teeny little bit of pressure to me today because there's I can't get more I did find this actually with a, a vintage shop on Etsy so the first thing I'm gonna do I've got I bought everything she had I bought two and I think it's about three quarters yards maybe only five eighths and the first thing I'm gonna do is iron it and then I'm going to cut it down to size so ironing especially when fabric has been stored for a long time really important because there's no way you're going to get a good clean cut off of um, wrinkled fabric and cotton stored for too long it does get some really deep creases so i like to just give it a nice solid press we don't really talk about ironing very much uh, ironing is really important to the overall success of your quilt though when you're ironing it's best to go with the length or width of fabric. So you wanna go across the grain or with the grain whenever possible. If you iron diagonally and you drag your iron as you go, you can distort your fabrics, you can distort your print. The 45 degree to your selvage is called your fabric bias. And that is the direction of your fabric that will have the most flexibility, the most give. It's the area of your fabric that you're most likely to distort if you accidentally pull on the bias. So what I'm doing here, you can see just a nice hot iron and I'm just lightly kind of going with the grain or with the length of grain. And I do have my water in a separate spray bottle. I don't put water in my iron because over time it can corrode in there and then you're gonna have some, some funky mist coming out. And I sure don't want that, especially because baby quilts often are white. Terrible decision. Don't make a white baby quilt. If you have a kid, you'll understand. But you don't want any rust or corrosion stains on your fabric, and you can get those if you put the water directly into your steam iron. Okay, so now that I have the backing cut, the next thing I'm going to do is cut the top. I have already measured it out, and I took the, the raw edge off of the, the leading corner here. So now that I've got my quilt top measured, I am going to go ahead and cut this off. And then this will serve as the front of the whole cloth quilt. 
Now you can see on here, there's a really nice pattern and I am going to stitch diagonally across the top and it's going to make the diamond shape right around each one of the little Precious Moments dolls. So that'll be my stitch design for this whole cloth quilt. Guys, I made a boo-boo. I meant to hit the record button as I cut the backing fabric for this quilt, but somehow I missed it. And so I was just talking to nobody. This quilt we decided is going to be 45 inches by 38 inches. I did go ahead and cut the backing of the quilt, the back fabric. One thing I would just wanna mention though, and this is kind of what I was telling you when I wasn't recording, is that when you are cutting the backing for your quilt, you want to have a two inch overhang on all four sides. So I cut it to where I would have enough overhang on all four sides when I layer this together, the backing, the batting, and the quilt top, I'll have a little bit of overhang on each side. That's gonna let me square it up later and just make sure that the finished quilt is really nice. All right, let's get this sandwiched together. I'm going to spray baste this quilt and then we'll get stitching. Okay, so I've got my sandwich uh, laid out together here and of course it's, it's a little bit larger than I can really reasonably get all on camera. But I wanted to show you something really quick about batting. So I've got my backing fabric underneath and I have it face down so the pretty side is on the table. Then I've laid my batting here and batting really has two sides. Uh, and you can always think of it as pimples and dimples. That's the way it was explained to me. You always want the dimples or the pretty side on top. It has the nice texture. And if your batting has been needle punched, you'll see where the needle punches through those pimples. You want those on the bottom. Today I'm using an 80-20 blend. So that's 80% cotton, 20% polyester blend. It does have scrim. And that's really just a stabilizer to keep all of your fibers together. That's what that little sheen is there on the back. And it is needle punched. That's gonna go side down. So our dimples are on top. And then you layer your quilt top there together. Now what I'm gonna use is a spray adhesive. And I like to have my whole quilt laid out flat. I do have a really nice big work table and I will take it section by section. So I will roll you know, the top quarter back and I will spray that strip. Then I will place it back down nicely, make sure all of the wrinkles are, are smoothed out. And then I will start from the other side and work my second quadrant, third quadrant, and then I will finish on the far corner to make sure that everything is laid smooth and nice and flat. So the next part of the quilting process is actually just doing the stitching. I have my walking foot on, I'm using my small domestic, and this is about the largest size quilt that I would even attempt on my small domestic machine. Just because it doesn't have a lot of throat space, I can't easily get anything larger than a baby size quilt through here and make sure that my lines stay really consistent. So you can see I've already started. I did mark my top. A pressure marker is all you need. You could use a water soluble marker if you want to. All you're doing is just guiding yourself on some lines. And then my goal in the end is just to kind of hit the purple circles going at the diagonal. That way I make those really nice cross hatching marks. So I'm gonna do all one direction and then I'm gonna do all of the other direction that way I don't have to actually um, break thread. So I started here in the corner, I went across the diagonal, I sewed right here on the edge, and then I went back. You can see I sewed here on the edge, and again, this is all going to get um, squared up. It'll be trimmed off when I square up my quilt. So I'm just gonna do this zigzag pattern all the way across the quilt top, maneuvering it as I go through. So I'll just show you here what that's gonna look like. My walking foot is on. I have tiny helpers today. 
And then you just kind of flatten it out and lay it out as you go. Ooh. We call it a walking foot for a reason. You don't need to run. Uh, the point is to go slowly. That way you get a nice even stitch and you have even feeding on both the top and bottom of the quilt. All right, I'm gonna get to it. Now that the quilt top is completely finished, I'm gonna go ahead and square it up and trim off all the excess. As you approach the edges when you are quilting, you're gonna take stitches along the edge just to make sure it doesn't curl and get rumpled as you're working uh, near the edge. Those stitches are called basting stitches. You always want to trim your quilt top within a quarter of an inch of those basting stitches. That way they are hidden in your binding. So what I'm gonna do is take all the extra backing off, get it down to just within a quarter of an inch of those basting stitches, and then I'm gonna cut this quilt top to be rectangular. So I want that finished size to be about 38 by 45. And so that'll make a nice rectangular quilt. When you run your, run your whole cloth quilts, especially for baby quilts, selvage to selvage, they tend to be very square. So you do have to sacrifice a little bit of that if you want them to be rectangular, which I'm gonna go ahead and do. I'm also going to cut our binding for this quilt. We're gonna use a cute little lavender color to match the polka dots in the quilt. And I will bring you back when I am ready to start the binding process. All right, so now that I've got my binding made, one of the fastest and easiest ways to attach binding is to do it by machine. So I'm gonna leave about an eight inch tail that I will use to uh, finish my binding but I'm going to attach it to the back side first, and I'm gonna sew about a quarter of an inch from the raw edges. All of my raw edges are matching on the one side. So I'm gonna start here. I'm going to pivot a miter corner down on this side, and then I will continue on. So I've got my walking foot here. You wanna make sure there's not any real tension or pressure at all on your quilt top. And then line everything up as you go. When I get to the corner, I'm going to drop my needle, lift my presser foot, rotate it, so that I can have a 45 degree seam right off that corner. And then I'm going to pull my needle up, slide it, and then trim my threads really fast. So now you can see I've got an angle here, a 45 degree angle, that'll focus, 45 degree angle where my thread goes off. I'm going to fold this back at a 45 degree angle and then I'm going to fold it over one more time to make that miter. Now I'm going to start a quarter of an inch so right here at the tip of my finger and I'm going to sew down the whole next side. I'm going to put this just back underneath my presser foot. Make sure my edges are nice and lined, lined up. Sink my needle down. I'm gonna hold my threads and then I'm gonna take a couple anchoring stitches. Whenever you stop, you always wanna make sure that needle is down. Okay, I've sewn all four corners and I have started to sew-ish of tail. And I've got a little bit extra over here too. So what I'm going to do is measure, I'm gonna lay the quilt out nice and flat and I'm going to press my binding strip, you know, really nicely against my quilt. Make sure there's no wrinkles or rumples. And then I'm going to press from the top also until they meet and just overlap by about a quarter of an inch because I'm gonna fold that back. That quarter of an inch is going to be my seam allowance 
for um, for this join here. So I've got my seams overlapped just slightly. I'm gonna cut this off right there. Okay, I'm approaching a corner here and I wanted to show you how to do that miter. Since we did the angled stitching on the back, as you're folding it over, and just keep in mind here, thread color does matter because you will see these threads on both top and bottom. Right now, I've got my lavender thread in the top and I've got the matching thread color that I used for the rest of the quilting on my bobbin thread because you will see it. So I'm going to keep this stitch line going just to the very corner, and then I'm gonna fold this like a present, keeping in mind which direction is going under, which edge of the fold goes under and which edge goes older, over. So I'm gonna fold it in first, and then I'm gonna fold it up to achieve that 45 degree miter, and you just hold it in place. Once I have it here at the top, I'm gonna to take a couple tacking stitches down this edge, down that fold, just to make sure that it's nice and secure and that it doesn't come up later. So let's see how that's done. Okay, my presser foot is right on top of where those folds meet. I'm gonna lift my presser and just like that, this whole cloth quilt is done. Again, using that fully printed fabric on the top and printed fabric on the back, layering them with just your topping, your batting and your backing fabric, and then doing that straight line stitching all over to give it that nice quilted effect. The binding, I think, turned out great. Those mitered corners look fantastic. If you flip it over, you just see those teeny tiny stitches right around the perimeter, but it will hold secure and it was fast and easy. Now this would be a great starter project if you are brand new to quilting and you wanna just get started. A whole cloth quilt is a great way to go. Um, donate it to a charity, you know, give it to a baby and I promise it'll get years of love and use all while you gain experience in the quilting process. Join us for more tips and tutorials and of course those free patterns at quiltsplusclove.com.